Okay, now let's pop off the crank pulley and then pull the balancer. So let's look at these balancers. This is the one we just took off. And this is the one off of a 1980s GM Goodwrench 350. First thing you'll notice is that this old one is a lot smaller in diameter, but a bit thicker. It does, just picking it up, it feels like it's about the same weight. I'm not gonna weigh these, I don't really care that much. The timing tab on there is a little bit adjustable, so the size difference shouldn't be a problem. But the reason this needed to come off is because the pointer is not in the typical location. If you look at where the dowel is, they're both facing up right now. Timing notch is right here on a typical pulley. And you see I have a Sharpie line right there, so I got pretty close on that one. But the notch for zero on this balancer was all the way over here. This is a 12 o'clock balancer, meaning that you would check the timing pointer straight down. So the notch is there. I, I really wonder what this is off of. I have no idea. It seems pretty old, but I can't really say anything other than that. But with this balancer, we already have the notch in the correct position for the timing tab. This also definitely looks newer than this one. The rubber doesn't look great. So let's give the seal surface one last wipe and we'll put some extra oil on it and we will get it installed. Now we're gonna use this long bolt to get this thing installed. Bolt. Just for the hell of it, let's actually pull out that number one spark plug and double check that top dead center mark. So here's my top dead center tool. This is a piece of bamboo, actually, and just Put it in where we took out that spark plug. And now we'll go until we first feel it stop moving. Okay, it's right at zero. I think we're in good shape. Okay, now let's look at the pulleys. This is the new crank pulley. This is the old crank pulley. You can see that they're the same height but this is a three groove and this is a two groove. The reason I got a new crank pulley is because of this. It doesn't fit at all. But if you'll notice, they're the same height. So that still doesn't fit. So what I ordered was an older style two-piece pulley that's held together with three little spot welds back here. And you can drill those out and separate the two pulleys. That's what I wanted to do. But they sent me this one, which is a one-piece, which would normally probably be a nice thing. But not for me. But every other dimension is perfect. So instead of going through everything again to find another pulley, what I'm going to do is cut that top ring off. What could go wrong? Since there's no way to adjust in or out on the supercharger pulley, it's really strange to me that I couldn't find anybody saying that like this pulley, the most common kind, doesn't work at all with the setup. There are some really expensive kits that are the whole pulley system made for this specific supercharger, but I'm not doing that. Oh, and another difference, you'll notice this is a smaller diameter than the new one. This crank pulley being bigger means it will drive the accessories a little bit faster, which is actually a good thing in this case and is gonna help us out a little bit. And if you look at the water pump pulleys, old versus new, you'll notice the opposite. The new one is a little bit smaller, but that'll have the same effect as the bigger crank pulley did and it'll drive the water pump a little bit faster. So it'll drive the water pump a little faster and the alternator a little faster, which is good because that alternator already has a little bit of trouble at nighttime. You can see the volt gauge jumping around at idle. So I'm really hoping that a little bit of extra speed there and maybe a slightly higher idle is gonna compensate. And especially since we're adding those electric radiator fans, that's pretty important. And finally, the power steering pump pulleys. 
These are not changing in size, which is probably a good thing because that power steering pump is already kind of too strong, honestly. I might be off of a truck or something, I'm not too sure. But that slightly bigger crank pulley will mean this is spinning a little bit faster. Hopefully it doesn't get ridiculous here, but I think it'll be okay. So once we cut the front groove off the crank pulley, that means we have two grooves left and they will all be one step farther back. So the whole idea here, and if it wasn't clear when I had to make that alternator bracket, I need everything to move back the width of a groove, which is 5 eighths of an inch. So we're moving every part of the drive back 5 eighths of an inch to make room for this belt. I don't want to have to buy another one of these, so let's be real careful here. switched out this power steering bracket for this one. I think they're exactly the same. The only real difference is that this one looks a lot nicer. But we have the pump tightened to the new bracket. Let's put on the new pulley. Okay, it's flush with the nose. It's looking pretty good. Well, I just realized even with the smaller pulley, this might not be small enough. I think the supercharger belt might hit this. I've also realized that the three pulley bolts are way too long, and the center bolt I got is actually also a little too long. So I ran and got some bolts from Home Depot. So these are fine thread, and we should be good to go. So this bolt is a little long, but I decided I don't actually want to cut it because I don't want to risk screwing these threads up and it, it goes in pretty nicely. I, I just don't want to mess with it. So I just have a couple washers on this side. So I can put blue Loctite on all these bolts, get them all started and like just a little bit snug and then tighten the center bolt to 60 foot pounds and then tighten the three outside pulley bolts to 30. Okay, that's the crank pulley on. And on the water pump, I'm just gonna sand the surface just a little bit. And goes the water pump pulley. And the new bolts, some Loctite on them. Okay, now that we have those pulleys on, I can see that it doesn't line up with the water pump pulley. Oh. How is anyone supposed to figure this stuff out? How does that not work? Basically the problem is, and I could only see it once these were all bolted up, but the water pump pulley is just a little far forward compared to the crank pulley here. Right about an eighth of an inch. So what I did was I ordered a crank pulley spacer, which is a little shim that fits behind the crank pulley that'll push this whole thing an eighth of an inch forward. So that should make this front groove line up with this rear groove in the water pump, which was the original plan. I just hope the supercharger pulley is still gonna be close enough or properly in alignment with the supercharger snout because there's not really a way to adjust that. Another concern is that this is a six inch pulley. This is about a six and a quarter and the supercharger assembly up here with the idler and the driven pulley is about seven inches across. So that belt coming down, it's gonna be getting pretty close. First thing we're gonna do is remove the coil cover from the distributor, unhook the wires here and just let them hang over on the sides, and then we can remove the entire distributor. Normally, 
you would also remove the oil pressure sender here, but just looking at it, I don't think I have to. I'm gonna try to wipe some of this stuff off. Turns out when you have a hole in the bed, a lot of leaves and stuff can get in here. Weird. Push everything out of the way. We'll go ahead and take the intake manifold off now. We'll follow the detorque sequence, which will be spiraling outside towards the center. Man, I don't know how I tightened this one. And there we go. You can see I installed these gaskets with like a light coating of RTV on both sides. I don't do that anymore, but only because it's a little more annoying to clean up. I wouldn't advise against it, it's just not something I'm doing anymore. I just don't think it's necessary. So this thing was leaking oil because I made the mistake of using these gaskets. This gap was too small, so when everything was tightened all the way down, these actually crushed and it leaked oil a pretty good amount out the front the whole time that was on. So this time we're definitely just going to lay down a bead of sealer. So I'm just going to clean these surfaces up with a razor blade. I got them really clean last time, and the only thing left is really little bits of RTV. Everything should come off pretty easily. I've used Rolock discs, but I don't like that because you always end up with a lot of abrasive in the pan. I've used wire wheels, and I prefer that to Rolock discs. But that's also kind of dangerous and asking for trouble because they do shed. They shed the little bits of steel wire. I did that on this engine, actually. When I've done that in the past, I'll go back through with a magnet and try to pick up every piece that I possibly can. I haven't had a problem doing that, but you definitely want to be careful with it. And no matter how you clean this stuff up, you want to make sure as little as possible ends up in the engine. And then we'll flush the oil with a fill and then run it for a couple minutes and then drain it again and then fill it with the real oil and filter we're going to use. If you're making more of a mess, it's a really good idea to stuff all the ports with paper towels or whatever, just to help keep stuff from falling into them. So I'm pretty sure the problem with these front and back gaskets was that this block has been decked. So the clearance there was so small that when the intake manifold was tightened down, they actually just kind of squished out and cracked and broke. And for reasons like that, uh, I wouldn't really recommend using them for anything. I popped off this valve cover to check on this rocker arm stud, and it still seems totally fine. But I had to repair the threads on this, and that's why it has a posi-lock rocker arm nut on it. Now I'm just going to clean out all the intake manifold bolt threads. Okay, now that things are pretty clean, I'm going to take some marble mystery oil and just kind of run it over everything to try to knock anything left down into the oil pan. Okay, I just drained out that Marble Mystery Oil uh, mini flush, and now we'll pour five quarts of cheap oil in there and start putting things together. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe these surfaces off and then reinstall the valve cover. And now let's do a test fit of the new intake manifold. That hits the oil pressure sender. Huh, I'm not sure what kind of fitting would work on that then. Okay, I guess the oil pressure sender's coming off. Just gonna put this little cap in there. Lock that off. Okay, take two. Let's try it with the gaskets. 
These Felpro gaskets are the ones recommended in the instruction manual for the supercharger kit. Everything lines up. These gaps are pretty tight, but that's totally okay. Yep, this all looks good. So what we're gonna do is take this back off, clean all the surfaces up really well, put a little RTV around the coolant passages, put a bead of RTV along the China wall. It's gonna be a little small because this gap is so small on this. And then we will drop it on and start bolting it together. This is actually too much. I definitely use too much here, but uh, it'll be okay. We've got RTV around the coolant ports on the intake manifold. Now we just have to drop it straight on there. Okay, let's try to get bolts through. First, let's get the four corners in. The four corners, just use engine oil. You gotta make sure you clean these bolts up if you're gonna reuse them. And don't get any of these tight until they are all installed. And all the other intake manifold bolts get thread sealants. I'm just gonna go through and seal all these up. The instructions call for 15 and then 30 foot-pounds all around. This next step is going to be 25. I'm going to torque them to 25 and then leave this alone for a while. Okay, now all the intake manifold bolts are torqued to 30 foot-pounds. And now that that's on, we can finally do a big test fit. Oh yeah. Oh no. Let's let this be a learning experience. Uh, you should test fit your parts first. So we see the alignment of the supercharger pulley here. And then the crank pulley. So all my messing with pulleys, I was trying to solve the wrong problem. Looks like pretty precisely one inch out of alignment. The supercharger belt pulley adapter is an inch too short. How and why? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea, but that is the situation we're in. And that explains why it seemed like these pulleys weren't gonna work. And when I did a test measurement for this distance, I must have been off. So, all of this work with the pulleys and the alternator brackets was a complete waste of time and money. Uh, so, uh, I've already had to think about this, and here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to mess with this because I'm going to lose my mind. I like this pulley because it looks nice. I like this pulley because it's installed. Another reason I don't want to go back is that I like the sizes of these pulleys. And they already modified the alternator brackets. I think I'm going to actually just set up the pulleys the way I had planned. So with an eighth inch spacer behind the pulley, I need another seven eighths of an inch spacer 
between the adapter and the pulley. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. I guess I'm gonna leave these pulleys on and just put that together as planned and probably change it later. I was hoping this would be a moment of victory having this thing installed, but no, it's just another defeat and another lesson learned. I think this is gonna do it for now. I'll find the spacers and order them, and hopefully then everything works. Are you freaking kidding me? I was rolling the car around and it got away from me for a second and rolled off the driveway and I can't quite get it over that hump so we're gonna get some help. Hello cardboard cat. And a fun new toy! Okay, take two. Oops. Okay, take two. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> 